Are you ready to hear the chilling tale of a mysterious disappearance? Join Midnight Murmurs as we unravel the haunting events surrounding the vanishing of a small town local. This spine tingling story will leave you on the edge of your seat. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Midnight Murmurs for more bone chilling content like this. Chapter 1 Blue Eyes and Red Shirt A mysterious stranger noticed the girl with the blue eyes and the red shirt on a warm summer afternoon in the small town of Millfield. She had a purpose as she strode down Main Street, her head held high and a determined expression on her face. She wore a red shirt with a white skirt and a pair of sneakers but it was her unusual sense of style that made her stand out in the crowd. Most onlookers were drawn to her hair rather than the rest of her outfit. Pure white, an unnaturally bright shade, seemed to be the color. Even though she had experienced looks and whispers before, the girl never let them affect her. Instead, she embraced her individuality and set out to stand out from the crowd. The girl kept having the feeling that she was being watched as she walked to the neighborhood library. She circled a couple of times, looking for anyone who seemed off-putting, but she didn't spot anyone unusual. She set the idea aside and entered the local library which was her favorite spot. The girl found refuge in the library, where she could lose herself in a book and forget about the outside world. She moved past the bookcases while running her fingers along the spines. She spent countless hours reading everything from classic novels to crime thrillers there over the years so she knew the library like the back of her hand. She went to the young adult section because she wanted something light for today. She heard a voice behind her as she was looking through the shelves. I'm sorry, miss. Do you require assistance? The voice had a slight southern accent but was deep and smooth. When she turned around, a man in his mid-thirties wearing a black suit and tie was standing there. He had piercing blue eyes, short, dark hair, and was tall and lean. Despite knowing better, the girl couldn't help but be drawn to him. No, please, thank you. I'm merely looking, she responded attempting to be informal. The guy grinned. I was wondering if you could suggest any good books to read since I'm new to the area. The girl considered the man's face for a moment before moving forward. She couldn't quite put her finger on it, but something about him seemed off. Finally, she responded, sure. What genres of books do you enjoy? He shook his head. I suppose anything that is skillfully written. Have you got a favorite? Before grabbing a copy of To Kill a Mockingbird, the girl gave it some thought. One of my favorites is this. Although it's a classic, it still holds true today. She gave the man the book, and he looked through the pages. I'm familiar with this one. It seems intriguing. I appreciate you making the suggestion. The girl turned to leave after nodding, but the man stopped her. Miss, wait. Your name escaped my attention. It's Lily, the girl responded after a brief moment of hesitation. Lily. What a lovely name. 
John here. The girl hesitantly shook his outstretched hand. Lily couldn't get rid of the feeling that something wasn't right as she left the library. Whatever it was, something about John made her uneasy, she wasn't sure what. She made a mental note to be more wary of him from now on. She had no idea that her encounter with John was just the start of a mystery that would drastically alter her life. Chapter 2 The White-Haired Girl Lily loves mysteries and spends most of her free time in the library reading detective fiction. She aspires to work as a detective someday. She can't get rid of the feeling that she's being followed as she makes her way home from the library. She makes the decision to put her detective prowess to the test and begins pursuing the person who has been stalking her. As she pursues him through Millfield streets, she employs every stealth tactic she has picked up from her books to avoid being seen. She follows him to a quiet park and stands back to watch him. She suddenly notices him speaking to someone, but she is unable to identify who it is. She makes the decision to approach, but before she can, she is discovered. Before he can say anything, Lily reveals to the stranger that she has been photographing him with her camera. John, the stranger she first met at the library, makes his introduction. He explains that while researching her, he wasn't stalking her. Lily is perplexed but curious. John informs her that he is aware of her fascination with mysteries, and that he has a job offer for her that he believes she will find appealing. When she asks for more information, he gives her a card with his name and address on it and instructs her to come back the following day. Lily can't help but be intrigued by John's proposal. She can't sleep because she keeps imagining what it might be. She arrives at the address on the card the following day and finds herself in front of a sizable mansion. After a brief moment of hesitation, she chooses to enter. A butler welcomes her and leads her to a room where she meets William, a successful businessman who owns the home. William tells the audience that he has been getting odd threats and that he needs someone to look into them. He is aware of Lily's fascination with mysteries and believes she is the ideal candidate for the position. If she can solve the mystery, he will offer to pay her a sizable sum of money. Lily accepts the position because she is thrilled about the chance. Lily spends her time looking into the case over the following few days. In order to gather information, she speaks with William's employees, examines his financial documents, and even poses as a customer at a nearby bar. She learns that William has many enemies and that members of his own family may be responsible for the threats. She also learns that the person who has been stalking her and William's case are connected. She grows more and more certain that John is connected in some way. Lily makes the decision to confront John about her worries. She runs into him at a coffee shop and inquires about his role in the investigation. John claims he has only been researching her because he finds her to be fascinating and denies everything. Despite her reservations, Lily chooses to give him the benefit of the doubt. She keeps looking into the threats until she discovers their true nature. 
William is impressed by her work and gives her the money she was promised after she presents her findings to him. Lily notices John waiting for her outside the mansion as she steps outside. She makes the decision to confront him once more and inform him that she is aware of his involvement in the case. John tells her with a smile that he was aware of her intelligence. The case was just a test to see if Lily had what it took to become a detective, he reveals, adding that he's been working with William the entire time. That Lily's suspicions about John were unfounded shocks her, but she also feels relieved. She acknowledges that she has gained insight into the importance of trust and that her goal of becoming a detective is now closer than ever. Chapter 3 Heart-Shaped Earring Lily is looking for hints as to who the enigmatic stranger who has been following her is. In an effort to find any information that would assist her in solving the case, she chooses to go to a nearby antique store. She is welcomed by the store's proprietor, a woman with graying hair and a mysterious air about her, as soon as she enters the space. As she leads Lily through the shop, the woman points out numerous relics and knickknacks. Nevertheless, Lily's focus is caught by a little heart-shaped earring that she notices. She inquires about it with the shop owner, who hesitates before grudgingly responding that it belonged to her daughter who vanished many years prior. Lily gets the impression that there is more to the tale than what she is being told since the woman appears guarded. Lily makes the decision to buy the earring and starts looking into its history. She learns that the local jeweler who created the earrings is now retired. When she goes to the jeweler, he verifies that Maria was one of his frequent clients and that he crafted the earring for her. He explains to Lily that Maria had a daughter named Sarah who vanished decades prior and that the heart-shaped earring was among the final gifts she received from her. Lily becomes aware that she could have found an important piece of information that could aid her in cracking the case. When the lady goes back to the antique store to question the owner, she is told that she is not aware of Sarah's abduction. Lily resolves to persist with her investigation despite her growing doubts. Lily's inquiry reveals a complex network of secrets and falsehoods that take her down a perilous road. She finds that Sarah's abduction is tied to a powerful family in town and that they would stop at nothing to keep their secrets buried. The heart-shaped earring is only one of many clues that Lily will need to uncover in order to solve the mystery and deliver justice to those who have been harmed. Chapter 4 The Trail Goes Cold Lily has encountered a dead end in her inquiry, and her confidence is dwindling. She spends hours reading through notes, pictures, and other clues, but nothing appears to go together. She's never felt so lost before. Doubts start to creep in. Maybe she's not cut out for detective work. Maybe this was all a mistake. She begins to feel a sense of hopelessness that she's never experienced before. To make matters worse, she receives a cryptic message that sends shivers down her spine. I'm watching you, the message reads, with no sender or context. Lily can't shake off the feeling that someone is following her and her paranoia starts to affect her daily life. 
She starts seeing the stranger's face everywhere she goes, and she can't stop the fear from growing inside her. Despite her fears, Lily tries to push forward with her investigation. She interviews more people and digs deeper into the case. But every lead she follows seems to turn into a dead end. The more she looks, the less she seems to find. Lily's annoyance and panic come to a climax when she realizes that her apartment has been broken into. The home is a shambles, and it's evident that someone has gone through her possessions. Nothing has been stolen, but Lily feels violated and afraid. She understands that someone is out to get her and that she has to be careful. Having nowhere else to turn, Lily resolves to confront John, the man who has been following her. She arranges up a meeting at a nearby coffee shop, and as she comes in, she sees him seated at a table in the back, reading a book. Lily takes a deep breath and approaches him. Who are you? she asks. John glances up from his book and smiles. I'm an old buddy, he says. Lily's heart skips a beat. She knows that she's never met him before, yet his face is so familiar. She tries to locate him in her memory, but she can't. You're lying, she replies, her voice shaking. I don't know you. John's smile disappears, and he looks at her with a seriousness that makes her nervous. I've been watching you for a long time, he adds. You're special, Lily. You have a gift for unraveling puzzles that I've never seen before. I've been testing you, evaluating if you have what it takes to join my squad. Lily's mind races. What is he talking about? What team? John leans in closer. I work for an organization that specializes in addressing complicated problems. We need individuals like you, people who can think outside the box and see the connections that others can't. You could achieve big things with us, Lily. Lily is torn. She's always wanted to be a detective, to utilize her abilities to aid others. But something about this circumstance feels odd. She can't throw off the notion that John is hiding something. I need more information, she adds ultimately. I need to know who you are and what you want from me. John nods. Fair enough, he says. I'll tell you everything. But first, I need you to believe me. Lily hesitates for a second, then nods. All right, she says. Tell me everything. And with that, John begins to tell the truth about who he is and what he wants from Lily. The reality is more shocking than Lily ever could have imagined, and it affects everything she thought she understood about herself and the world around her. Chapter 5 Uncovering the Truth Lily sat across from John, her hands fumbling with the hem of her blouse. She had never been adept at confrontation, but she knew she had to confront John about his genuine intentions. All right, John, spill it. What's the problem with all of this? Why have you been following me? Lily requested. John let out a long sigh and sat back in his chair. 
Lily, I realize this all looks weird to you, but I guarantee there's a legitimate explanation for everything. I've been studying you for a long time, and I know you have what it takes to be a great detective. Lily lifted an eyebrow, suspicious. So this was all just a test? To see whether I'm good enough? John nodded. Yeah, but not just any exam. This was a test to check if you had the correct mentality for this sort of work. To evaluate if you have the passion and determination to tackle the toughest cases out there. Lily sank back in her chair, feeling a mix of comfort and uncertainty. So why not simply tell me from the start? Why go through all of this? John leaned forward, his gaze keen. Because, Lily, this task is not for the faint of heart. It's risky and unexpected. I wanted to know if you were absolutely dedicated to this before I could trust you with anything. Lily took a big breath, attempting to digest everything. All right. So what happens now? Am I in or not? He grinned, his eyes gleaming. You're in, Lily. Welcome to the team. For the following three weeks, Lily dived deeply into her new position as a detective in training. John and the rest of the crew gave her the ropes, teaching her everything from basic evidence collecting to interrogation procedures. Despite the long hours and tough effort, Lily felt more alive than she ever had before. She reveled in the challenge of solving complicated cases and couldn't get enough of the buzz that came with every successful lead. As she grew more involved with the team, Lily began to understand more about John and his background. She found that he had been a detective for many years before beginning his own firm, and that he had a reputation for being one of the finest in the profession. But there was something about John that Lily couldn't quite put her finger on. He was always there to provide counsel and support but he also seemed to be holding something back. One night, when Lily was working late at the office, John walked in and sat down next to her. Lily, I need to tell you something, he continued, his voice slow. Lily turned to him, astonished. What is it? John took a big breath. There's something I haven't told you. Anything about my past. Lily leaned in, fascinated. What is it? John pondered for a time, then spoke. Years ago, I was working on a case that went awry. I made a mistake, and others got wounded. I've been carrying that guilt with me ever since. Lily stretched out and placed a hand on his shoulder. John, we all make errors. It doesn't define who you are. He gazed at her, his eyes full of appreciation. Thank you, Lily. You have no clue how much that means to me. As the months passed by, Lily continued to study and improve as a detective. She worked on more and more cases, each one more hard than the previous. But all her triumphs, there was always something lacking. She couldn't escape the idea that there was more to John's history than he was letting on. One day, Lily decided to confront John about it. 
John, I know there's something else you haven't told me. Something enormous. And I need to know what it is. John sighed and turned aside. Lily, I appreciate your interest, but there are certain things in my background that I'm not ready to reveal yet. Lily didn't back down. John, if we're going to be working together, I need to be able to trust you entirely. And it involves knowing everything about you. He took a deep breath and turned back to face her. All right, Lily. I'll tell you. But you have to assure me that this stays between us. Lily nodded, her pulse racing with eagerness. John took a deep breath and began to talk. Years ago, while I was still a detective, I was working on a case involving a major politician. I unearthed proof of corruption, but before I could bring it to light, I was intimidated. I was advised to abandon the lawsuit, or else. Lily leaned forward, her eyes wide. Or else what? John thought for a bit before speaking. Or else my family would be in danger. I didn't know what to do. I was divided between my responsibility as a detective and my obligation as a husband and parent. In the end, I made the decision to protect my family. I abandoned the lawsuit and walked away from my employment. Lily remained silent for a time, contemplating everything. John, I had no clue. That must have been extremely terrible for you. John nodded. It was. But it's something I've come to grips with through the years. And now, with you on my side, I feel like I can finally make a difference again. Together, we can take down the crooked and the powerful. We can make a genuine impact. Lily smiled, feeling more linked to John than ever before. You're correct, John. Together, we can achieve anything. Chapter 6 The Final Showdown Lily's pulse hammered in her chest as she stood in the desolate alleyway, face to face with the genuine monster. She had followed the trail of clues all the way here, to this abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of town. She had put all the pieces together. But yet, she couldn't believe what she had found. The reality was more terrible than she could have ever imagined. Hello, Lily, the villain replied, his voice dripping with hate. I must say, I never believed you would make it this far. Lily gazed at him, unwilling to exhibit any fear. You picked the wrong girl to fool with, she remarked, her voice firm. The villain chuckled. Well, I don't think so, he responded, going closer to her. You may be intelligent, but you're only a child. You have no notion who you're working with. Lily's thoughts raced as she attempted to think of a way out of this dilemma. She realized she was outmatched, yet she refused to give up. She had to defend herself and the people she cared about. Then, she remembered the heart-shaped earring she had acquired in the antique shop. She went into her pocket and took it out holding it up for the villain to see. What's this? he inquired, his eyes narrowing. This is the secret to your destruction, Lily continued, 
her voice quivering slightly. I know everything now. I know who you are, and I know what you've done. The villain drew closer, his hand reaching out to seize the earring from her. But Lily was too quick. She escaped his clutches and pushed forward, using all her power to tackle him to the ground. The two of them wrestled, rolling around on the dusty concrete floor. Lily battled with all her strength, inspired by her vow to bring this monster to justice. Eventually, she managed to grasp a nearby pipe and smacked him hard on the head. The villain dropped on the ground, unconscious. Lily sighed a sigh of relief, but she knew her experience wasn't finished yet. She had to contact the police and make sure this man was brought to justice. As she reached for her phone, she heard footsteps behind her. She turned around, ready to fight if necessary. But to her surprise, she saw John walking towards her, a look of concern on his face. Are you okay? he asked, his voice filled with worry. Lily nodded, feeling a sense of relief wash over her. I am now, she said, smiling. John walked over and put his arm around her, offering her the comfort she needed. You did it, he said. You solved the mystery and saved the day. Lily grinned, feeling a sense of satisfaction in what she had done. She had faced her fears and overcome them using all her skills and wit to outsmart the true villain. As she walked out of the warehouse, she knew that she would never forget this experience. That had altered her permanently, and she was glad for the things she had learnt. In the end, Lily had solved the mystery and found closure. She had shown to herself and to the world that she was capable of great things, and she had taken a step towards accomplishing her ambition of becoming a detective. And as she walked away from the scene of the ultimate fight, she knew that she was stronger than ever before. Thanks for watching this video on Midnight Murmurs. I hope you enjoyed this intriguing story about the mysterious disappearance of Amelia Earhart. If you want to hear more fascinating tales like this one, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to never miss a new video. And as always, don't forget to give this video a like and leave a comment below with your thoughts on the disappearance of Amelia Earhart. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video.